Hey guys, the first Godot add-on jam is now over and it was a great success. With over 140 participants, 60 submissions and 666 ratings. The quality of the submissions is pretty impressive and I want to congratulate everyone participating. We used one category for ranking, which is love. People could use it to tell which add-on they found interesting, useful, funny or whatever. Without further ado, let's go over some of the submissions. At the 10th place, we have the branch add-on made by Haunting Bees Production. This add-on has a lot to unpack. It's made to create general purpose trees for things like cutscene scripts, decision making, dialogues, etc. You have various nodes allowing you to do branching, create dialogue, call functions, etc. It's a pretty huge add-on and very impressive work for a jam. If you're interested, check out the itch page, there's documentation about all the nodes and also two example scenes that showcase all the nodes in action. Godot's UI system is great, but it lacks some features, and Max Size Container by Matt UV is trying to add one. Just like you can already set a minimum size, now you can also do it for the max size. This comes in the form of a custom node, to which you define the maximum size, and then voila! You build your UI as usual, and you won't be bigger than what you define. This is especially useful when presenting text, as you really don't want it to span over the whole screen. This is a good example of an add-on that could totally be integrated to Godot Core in the future. Great job! At the 8th place, Editor Flycam by Kexdev is bringing to Godot a simple but super useful feature to the 3D camera. With it, you can align the camera with the current editor view. That's it! It's simple but tremendously useful, and something we find in lots of 3D programs. Again, this could totally be integrated right inside Godot. Popo2 by Karen Alga is an add-on to create point-and-click games inside Godot. With it, you'll be able to create and manage your point-and-click games by creating rooms, characters, inventory, props, regions, etc. The editor UI is neatly divided in three tabs, main, room and audio, to provide everything you need. It has a nice example project and a tutorial video with English subs. This looks very well made and professional, so congrats for your entry. At the 6th place, we have LineEdit Plus, made by none other than me. It's a custom node allowing you to use regex on a LineEdit node. With that, you can restrict what the user is typing, allowing only digits, for example. But you can also use the signal that sends the result of the regex each time the user is inputting something. This adds something that I thought Godot was lacking, and it could totally be in the core in the future. Shameless plug, I also made GDScript console for this jam, an in-editor console allowing you to run GDScript expressions and call your script functions. You want to create bullet hell games, but you don't want to take the time to create all the spawning code? Don't worry, Bullet Hell by Dark Peace is just what you need. It has four main custom nodes to spawn the points, determine the pattern of the bullets, configure the bullets, and trigger the spawning. There's full documentation on how to use it, and there's a very cool demo project showcasing every feature of this add on. And there are many. This looks very cool and truly an amazing entry. I can't wait to see games using it. We've seen some very cool add-ons, but nothing about audio until now. Godot SFXR by Tomero is just what you think it is. It brings the power and ease of use of the well-known SFX program SFXR right inside Godot. When you use this add-on, you have a custom node SFXR Stream Player. You add it to your scene as usual, but now, instead of using a WAV or MP3 file, you create the sound directly in the node. But don't worry, if WAV, Envelope, Arpeggiation and Flanger are not familiar for you, you can use the predefined parameters to create common sound effects just like in SFXR, and if you want to modify it, you can always access the different parameters creating the sound. Right now, the sounds are always created on the fly, and it can create some hiccups, but Tomero thought of that, and you can build the sound cache once to reuse the sound without hiccup. I've also discussed with him the ability to save the sound as an audio file to reuse it later. If you want more details, Michael from Game From Scratch made a video about it. This is an awesome entry that's going to be used a lot for sure. Congrats, Tomero! We are arriving at the top 3 now, and I think you'll agree that the quality of the entries is absolutely amazing. 
At the third place, we have Hyperlog by Guy Unger, an add-on to log and graph information about your objects in Godot. From the very cool demo video, you can see Hyperlog in action. To use it, you simply call the log function with the data you want to visualize. You can display text, graph data, and visualize vectors. This is an elegant way to debug your game without having to look constantly at the console output. The only thing I'd love to see is a small example scene showing all the capabilities of this add-on. This is an amazing one that is surely going to be very useful to a lot of people. Also, props to Rafael Pica for the Hyperlog title animation which is just awesome. At the second place of this jam, we have Dialog Manager by Nathan Hode. The name is pretty self-explanatory. This is an add-on that provides editor and runtime branching dialogues. We've seen Dialog Managers in the past in other add-on showcase, but this one is text-based, whereas the other are usually note-based. This means a very easy and fast editing of your dialogues with just text, so you spend more time writing and less time organizing your notes. It has support for syntax checking, a built-in test scene, and translation. There's a nice example to show you how to get started and some documentation on the GitHub page that will show you how to use it and the syntax to write your dialogues. It should cover everything you need to use it. Little bonus, there's a version checker right inside the add-on so you'll be notified when a new version comes out. Neat! Huge congrats for your add-on Nathan and congrats for the second place. I want to quickly mention that we have other cool dialogues managers like Diagraph by Dylan and Dialogue Notes by Nagi. Check them out! And for the first place of the Godot Add-on Jam first edition, we have Improved Resource Picker by Mac of Weight. This add-on is amazing because it's super simple but very useful. It allows you to search for what you want inside the Resource Picker dialog. The DOS default one will just list all the resources and it can be very painful to get what you want. With this add-on, you have a small research bar that allows you to filter the resources as you type. This goes to show how a simple add-on can have a huge impact. People love this add-on because it removes a pain point in a very elegant and easy to use way. Congrats Mac of Weight for the first place. You win nothing but the pride of having made something and put it out there for people to use. These were the top 10 loved add-ons for this jam, but there's a lot of other cool add-ons and I cannot showcase all of them of course. I just wanted to mention some other add-ons that I think are super cool and interesting. Low Spec Plugin by Hylit brings low spec color palettes right inside Godot. Sprite Editor by SoloCodeNet is a pixel art sprite editor allowing you to create and edit sprite without leaving Godot. Stream Toy by Deep Entertainment lets you use the PubSub API from Twitch. I'm probably going to use it to add stuff to my Twitch overlays made in Godot. Lensius wanted to mention GD Sheets, a spreadsheet editor right inside Godot, with a helper class to write and access CSV data. His second mention goes to GD Quests, an add-on to handle all types of quests. All the structure is node-based, allowing you to neatly organize your quests. I really encourage you to go through all the submissions because there are a lot of amazing add-ons that are sometimes super specific. You'll probably find something useful for you or that can inspire you to create your own add-on. If you find something that you like, don't hesitate to rate it on itch, start it on GitHub or leave a comment below with your findings. I want to thanks again Lencius for organizing the jam with me and to all the people joining the jam discussing and helping each other on Discord and of course the amazing 60 entries that we had and that are now available for the Godot community. People are already asking when the second edition will be, so I guess there's some interest in such a jam. If you want a second edition, please tell us in the comments below. If you want to support me, you can wishlist Dashpong on Steam, the local multiplayer game I'm working on. I'll see you in the next video, and in the meantime, have a great day. Bye!